Hi there, and welcome back to my channel. I've got my coffee, which makes me a real YouTuber. It's one of the requirements of YouTube videos for photographers. Coffee. Mmm. It's good. I wanted to come back to something I was talking about in a previous video where I talked about my reasons for getting the 6D Mark II over the 5D Mark IV. This is more in a, a general thing, not specifically about Canon, but over the past week or so I've seen on social media a lot of photographers sharing details about new cameras um, that are being released and being announced. So I'm sure that with these announcements, a lot of photographers have already pulled their credit cards out and placed their orders, sight unseen. Whether they need it or not, they're going to be out there, they're going to be buying whatever is new. I think it's, um, I don't know, it's the consumerist world we live in. We always have to have the latest and greatest, and as I've mentioned before, it's not always necessary. So I was searching through my office for something the other day, and I came across this. The Canon 20D. The first digital camera that I bought. I got this back in about 2004. Um, I had been a film shooter for years, and I was planning a trip to Thailand beginning of 2005 and I was working out my film budget for it, how many rolls of slide film I would need to take with me. I was planning to go for about, I think it was 16 or 17 days all up, and it was predominantly a photo trip. I calculated how much film I would use based on the trip I'd made in 2004 when I was just there for a week, which was a mixture of photos and visiting some friends. I went through about 15 to 20 rolls of film in that week. So I figured on a two week, little over two week photo trip, it'd be probably at least double that. And so when I ran the, ran the figures, I calculated that probably 40 rolls of film, uh, all slide film, plus processing costs. And it came, at the time, it came to about two-thirds of the cost of the 20D body only, not the lens. So that pretty much justified the move to digital. At the time the 20Ds came out, they were about 2,000 US dollars for the body. So it was a, um, it was a fairly big investment considering film cameras could be had for a few hundred dollars um, and film was not that expensive until you started buying and processing a lot of it. So I got this. The Thailand trip basically paid for two-thirds of the cost just in savings on film. And I used that 20D for mm, a number of years. Um, probably I know, four or five years, I think, it, it became, a, when the 40D came out, the 20D became a backup camera. Um, but it got a lot of use, and it shot a lot of good stuff. Some of the photos that you can see on the screen now were shot on the 20D. Um, when I first started shooting it, I still had a bit of a film mentality. I took things very slow. So, like, this photo that's on now from the cave, I only shot like 15 or 20 photos in this cave because that's probably what I would have done with a uh, roll of film in it. Um, if I were to go back now I would shoot a lot more I think with digital and big memory cards. But sometimes slowing down and only shooting a little bit um, actually gets you some higher quality work so yeah it, it evens out over the end. Um, I shot magazine covers with it, um, as you can see now, I shot double truck spreads. Um, I did a lot of work on this camera and it was, it was great for all of that. Compared to today's cameras, yeah, it's not so good. It's only 8 megapixels, it gets really noisy at about ISO 800, ISO 1600, somewhere around there. It's, it becomes basically unusable. But I could take this camera today. Um, and in the right conditions, at ISO 100, I could set up some lights and I could shoot a portrait, for instance, that would be perfectly fine for almost any kind of use I would need it for. So I say that because people are going to be rushing out buying new cameras, and I kind of wonder, is it a waste of money to do so? 
Think of a, a full frame, one of the, the flagship full frame cameras from any of the major companies. They're three, three and a half thousand dollars for the body. A couple of L series lenses or whatever the Sony or Nikon equivalents are, that's another three, four thousand um, dollars you can be adding there. So you can be spending seven, eight thousand dollars kidding yourself out on gear. So you could spend seven, eight thousand dollars on the latest and greatest full frame monster cameras with the best lenses and they will be fantastic. You will get years of use out of them. But do you need them? Most photographers these days, they're not printing big stuff. Do you need to spend $8,000 to get an Instagram photo? Do you need to spend $8,000 to get more likes on Facebook? I kind of wonder if we, a lot of the time we chase the gear, not the photo. You could go over to Amazon and for say $1,000, $1,200, you could get a camera system that is going to give you years of happy photography. And it's going to be a lot more affordable than going out and buying the latest and greatest things that have just been released that you probably don't need anyway. So if I'm a photographer today, if I'm starting out, my friends have got cameras, they're rushing out to drop seven, eight grand on the newest system that comes out. And I think, okay, I wanna do that. But then I think, what is gonna help my photography the most? Is spending $7,000 on one of these top line cameras really gonna matter when all I'm doing is shooting stuff on Instagram and maybe making a couple of prints for my wall? Probably not even making prints, probably just shooting for Instagram. Um, I mean, ask yourself, when was the last time you actually printed your work? Okay, so is it worth it? I could spend a thousand dollars, I could get a Canon 80D with a couple of lenses for $1,200 on Amazon at the moment. So that would leave me six, about $6,000 to spend on something else. So I could buy a plane ticket to Southeast Asia. I don't know, maybe, what's that, $500, $1,000? Okay, so I've got five grand left. $5,000 in Southeast Asia is probably gonna be three, four, five months of traveling fairly easily. Do you think your photography will improve more if you spend a thousand dollars on a camera and then spend three or four months on the road traveling and photographing every day in different places, different environments, different cultures? Or if you spend seven or eight thousand dollars and buy a camera and stay at home? I think these are things to consider when new cameras come out, when they get announced, people want to rush off and buy them thinking that it will improve their photography and sometimes it might. If you're a professional you need to have a certain level of gear because you've got to satisfy clients to keep the money coming in to keep a roof over your head. So yeah as a professional I get that. Sometimes you've got to spend the money on the gear because this is how you make a living. But most photographers don't do it professionally. Most photographers are not professionals. So what is going to make your photography better? Gear or experience? That could be something to consider when you're uh, thinking about spending money on new gear. Maybe it's better to buy a plane ticket, take off to the other side of the world and immerse yourself in photography for three months. All right, I will be back again uh, next time. So follow me on the various socials. Uh, links are down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'll have some more stuff coming up. All right, thank you.